So this section is just focusing on proportions. We're not going to have any means in this in this chapter or in this section. And then the next section, 7.3, will only be means, averages. Okay, so they kind of break it up. Okay, so sampling distribution of p hats. Sampling distribution of the sample proportion p describes the distribution of values taken by the sample proportion p hat in all possible sample sizes from the same sample size from the same population. So this is what we did, the card, this thing here. Right? You guys took a bunch of samples, pulled some cards, and you guys had a bunch of p hats, right? The question was for here, how many reds? What proportion of red, right? And then you guys, we made a graph, right? That's what they did for this one here. This one was about pennies. What proportion of pennies? So they had a can of pennies. They pulled 20 pennies. And they found which or what proportion of those pennies was older than 2000. It was made from the 2000 after. Which one was made? So they found, so it looks like the center is around 60. So around 60% of all, about 60% of all of the pennies were from the 2000s, okay? So instead of X's, they use P hats. It's the same thing, okay? It's the same thing. All right, so here we go. So when we're talking about sample proportions, when we talk about dis, um, um, sampling distributions, there's three things we got to address. Center, spread, and shape. How do we know what the center, where the center is going to be? How do we know where the shape, what the shape is? And how do we know where, what the spread is? Right? That's what that next part is for. Okay? That's what this next part is for. So, the center is the mean. Mean is a measure of center, right? Well, the center is always going to be the, 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 the true proportion, P. Right? P is the true proportion, what the answer actually is. So whatever the true answer is, that's where the center of the sampling distribution will be. All right? If I was to graph all of those numbers on over there, if I was to graph, make a dot plot, the center would be 27.5. Okay? So whatever the true proportion is, that's where the center is, right? Just like just like we did here. Just like we did here, the center was 0.5. The true answer was 0.5. Okay. Um, the spread. We have a formula for spread. The nice thing is you don't have to memorize that formula. Formula is on your um, formula sheets that I've given you and you will be able to use on the test. Right here, it's on the back. So now we're moving to the back. Sample proportion right there. Okay, so that's for spread. That's for standard deviation. Standard deviation of all of these guys. On average, how far are each one of these away from the center? Okay, that formula will give that to us. Okay, and then the last thing is shape. What shape are they? Well, they're approximately normal if n times p is greater than or equal to 10 and n times 1 minus p is greater than or equal to 10. n is the number in the sample. p is the true proportion. Multiply those two numbers. If it's bigger than 10, you're good. n times 1 minus p. So 1 minus the true proportion. If it's still bigger than 10, you're good, okay? It's approximately normal, okay? Okay, so let's look at example number one. 
According to the National Center for Education Statistics, 20% of students who recently earned a bachelor's degree were business majors. Okay. Imagine taking an SRS of 300 students who recently earned a bachelor's degree and calculating P hat. So P hat would be the proportion of students in the sample who are business majors, majored in business. Okay. So the first thing is we have to identify the mean of this sampling distribution. Okay. The mean is going to be the same. The mean of P hats is going to be the same as the true proportion. So the true proportion comes from the population. Who or what is the population here? There you go. All students who recently earned a bachelor's degree. Do we know the percent of those that also are business majors? 20%, right? That refers to, that's a parameter. That refers to everybody, right? Well, guess what? The mean of all the P hats is going to be equal to the same number, 0. 0.20. Okay. That's the center. So the center of this distribution is going to be at 0 0.20. That's where I expect to see the highest bar or the highest dots or the highest X in the graph. Okay. Next thing, calculate and interpret the standard deviation for the sampling distribution of P hat. Verify that the 10% condition is met. Okay, so first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to go to my, here's the formula right here for standard deviation for the sampling distribution for, for um, proportions. Okay, so that's the formula I'm going to use. It's also on your formula sheet, so you do not need to memorize it if you see it on a test. Okay, so... P, 1 minus P, 1 minus P over N, standard deviation. Okay. That'll tell us about spread of the distribution. Well, we know P, right? We just figured out P. P is 0 0.20. So it's going to be 0 0.20 times 1 minus 0 0.20 over n. n is the number in the sample. In this case, n is 300. Crunch some numbers. Go three decimal places, and what do you get? Okay. Is it a scientific notation number that they give you? Let's see. So let's see here. So we multiply 0 0.2 times 1 minus 0 0.2, which is 0 0.8. Oh, okay, gotcha, yeah. And then take the square root of that. Yeah, you're right. The um, when I divide, it is it is going to be a scientific notation. But when you divide, when you take the square root, it'll turn into a actual decimal without a zero two three zero two three. So about two percent because it's a proportion. So the center of this sampling distribution is at 0.2. It'll vary by about 2% each way. Okay. Then it says something about the 10% condition, the 10% condition. Well, the 10% condition, I skipped that part in here. It's right underneath the, um, 
the, the formula? It says as long as 10% as the 10% condition is satisfied. Here is the 10% condition right here. Okay, so we're going to have to check that. Little n is the sample size. Big N is the size of the population. Okay, so let's see if that checks out. No. The sample size, which is 300, has to be less than or equal to 10% of big N. Big N is the population size. Do we know the population size? No, we don't, right? They don't give us the population size. They say the sample is 300, but they don't give us the population size. Okay? So if we don't have a number for population size, sometimes you won't. We just write down in words who the population is. And we said that, right? Who is the population? Mm -hmm. All students who recently earned bachelor's degree. If I had that number, it would go there, but I don't have the number. All students who recently earned a bachelor's degree. How do I verify if I don't have a number? This is what you do. 300 has to be less than the number. So what number would have to go here? So you gotta do some mental math. What number would have to, what's the smallest number here that would make it equal? Not 300. 300 would be too small. 3,000, right? If this was 3,000, 10% of 3,000 is 300. That would be equal. Anything more than 3,000 would work. It would be greater than because it could be greater than or equal to. So I just need the school to be at least 3,000 people. So we put a little note here. Um, population size needs to be at least... 3,000. Population size needs to be at least 3,000 for it to work. So I'm just talking, so I'm not talking about the whole thing. Yeah, you're right. This, this would be at most, but I'm talking about this number here. Because when I multiply, when I multiply the number in the parentheses with this, I have to be bigger the same size or bigger than 300, right? So if this number is 3,000, it's equal. If it's more, it's okay. Okay, that's the 10% that's the condition. The 10% condition is right there. Okay, and then the last thing is sample size, or shape, sorry, shape, sample shape, sampling distribution shape. Okay, well, the shape is approximately normal as long as the large counts condition is satisfied. Well, what's the large counts condition right here? This has to be true, and this has to be true. Okay, n sample size times p has to be greater than or equal to 10. n times 1 minus p has to be greater than or equal to 10. Okay. So, n times p greater than 10. n is 300. p is 0.2.
20% of 300 is 60. That checks out. 60 is, at, is greater than or equal to 10. Now I have to do the other end. N times 1 minus P is greater than or equal to 10. 1 minus P is 80% eight, or 0 0.8. Well, 80% of 300 is 240. Both of those check out. You're good. So we would say shape is approximately normal. because of the large counts condition. Right here, one minus P. P is 0.2, so one minus 0.2 is 0.8. Mm -hmm. Okay. So that's center shape spread. All right. Last thing we're going to do is we're going to look at the conditions. The conditions, I'm telling you right now, the conditions are one of the biggest things that students may not seem important, but it could be the difference between an A and a B on a test. Okay, because the conditions are important. We've done actually a couple of the conditions. One condition is 10% condition and the other one is large. So we just did those. What is What are the conditions and why do we need conditions? Well, we're basing all of these off of samples. So if I take a sample, I'm not taking the entire population, right? Like for this question here. They only took 300 students. They didn't look at every single person. They didn't ask every single person what they majored in. They didn't look at everybody. They just looked at 300, right? When you did those over there on the wall, you didn't look at every single game. You looked at five, only five and 10, right? There were 82 games and you only looked at five and 10, right? Your sample sizes, right? So we're making assumptions about the population based on a sample, okay? So that's why we have to do what's called assumptions or conditions, right? We're not looking at the entire population. We're just looking at a sample. So when we do that, we have to use conditions or assumptions as sometimes they're called, okay? The first one is random sample. How was the sample? How did you get the sample? Was it done in a correct method? That's the first one, okay? Random sample of the population. Was there any bias? Was it done correctly? Like the samples we did yesterday. We did those correctly because we used the calculator. A calculator randomly had a random generator. So we were able to get um, five or 10, however many we needed. Okay. That's the first condition. The second one is the 10% condition. The one we just did earlier. Is 10%, the sample size cannot exceed 10% of the population size. So the sample size has to be big, but not too big. Okay, this is so that the sampling without replacement is similar enough to sampling with replacement. Remember, because if I replace things, it changes the probability. Sometimes, but we don't want that to happen. So the sample has to be big enough, but not too big. That's the second condition. And then the last condition is kind of the opposite. Is it large enough? Okay, is it large enough? So how do we know if it's large enough? Well, you use the, um, the large counts. The large counts condition. Which is the one we just used. N times P greater than or equal to 10 
n times 1 minus p greater than or equal to 10. It's the same one we just used. Okay. If it passes all three, we're good. If not, we have to note where it doesn't pass and go from there. Okay. So these are the three conditions. We're going to be using these conditions. We're going to be using conditions the rest of the semester. Why? Because we base everything off a sample. If I base it off of a sample, I have to make conditions. Like if I'm trying to get the average GPA of students at Central High School, and I only base that off a sample of 50 students. And I said, these 50 students have a GPA of 3.3. That means the average GPA of students at Central High School is 3.3. You're like, well, you didn't ask me. I'm making assumptions based off a sample. To do that, I have to make sure that these three guys are accounted for. Okay? That's why we have to do that. Okay? That's why, because it's based off of sample. Anything based off of a sample, we have to do that. We have to do these three conditions. Okay? All right, so tomorrow what we're going to do is we're going to do these. We're going to do example number two. Okay? Don't pack up yet because we're not done because we're going to read through what we need to do because I don't want to have to go over the steps. Tomorrow I'm going to hit the ground running. We're going to do number two right off the bat. But how do I do these problems? Because these problems are worth five points. On a test, they're worth five points. Here is each point, how you get each point, okay? How do I get one point? Well, define the parameter. Define the parameter, just like you did in your homework. What, the parameter refers to a number. It's either P, for tomorrow it'll be P because we're only doing proportions, okay? P equals what? Okay, check the conditions. If it's based off of a sample, and look at number two, it's based off of a sample of 150. So we're going to have to do those conditions. So the second thing we do is these three conditions. Okay, that's point number two. Three points. Oh, actually, number three, you only have to do if they ask you to. If they ask you to, only if asked, describe the distribution center shape spread you only have to do that if they ask you to okay so make a note in that we don't have to do number three unless they specifically ask us okay you don't have to do number three unless you're specifically asked so most of these are four point questions because number three they won't ask you to do or they'll ask you to do, but on a separate question, okay? Number four, use the normal model. That's the curve, right? That's the curve, that's the middle, that's the shading, that's the z-score table, that's the, t uh, all of that stuff, okay? We've done that before. And then number five, you got an answer, put it in sentence, interpret it. Write it out, write out a sentence explaining what what in the heck that number means. That's your last point. Okay, so these questions are going to be worth four points because there's four different things you need to do. Number three, you don't need to do because they want, unless they ask you specifically. Okay, so that's what we're going to do tomorrow. The first question we're going to do, we don't have enough time to do number two because number two, it's going to take us a little bit of time. We'll do that first thing tomorrow. Okay, we only have two more questions. That's it, we're done. Because... That's proportions. And then next week, we'll do means. And then we'll be done. That's the chapter. Very quick chapter. Okay?